Computer, when you are ready, let's generate a random player to face Steve Martin in the bubble match. Who is it going to be? The pick is in. Come on down. Tom Cadden's! <laughs> oh, wowie. Steve, I'm going to give you this microphone right here because we want to know your thoughts right now. I should have just called him out, shouldn't I? <laughs> I should have just called him out. I suspect he was thinking to himself, even with the, the extra bounty on his head, that he could be in for a quiet afternoon, that he showed enough form through the last few months and, and yesterday that maybe he could sneak into the sort of evening's action without having to do too much more. And now he's going to have to work hard. Of course, we know that Steve is because he's up against Tom, but he's going to get first opportunity. Good to see Steve back. He's been out of the game for quite a long period now, and he's, he's too good a player, you know, not to be involved. Yeah, and it, it tells you the sort of the fact that he wasn't looked at yesterday, he wasn't picked, sort yeah. of tells you that, that it's, it's, you know, people were finding other options to go for. Yeah, no, they, uh, I think all the top players would have a lot of respect for him. He plays very much like sort of the Jordan Shepard type mould. He's very attacking, great potter, just gets on with it. It's come out nicely for him. I think both those two reds that are together slide past the one at the pocket, so... He can connect up quite nicely for him. He probably needs to take the higher one now. Hopefully get back out for the, the other one in the same pocket. Oh, short is it? Just, just got there. Just has to mind this cue ball here. No, it's fine. Absolutely perfect on the eight ball. So it's a reverse clearance to start this match from Steve Martin in the next break. Well, yeah, the, the, I mean, the three matches you play, and you're obviously, we're under the stage now that there is no easy game, so you know you have to win three real tough games in a row. So if, if Tom loses any of these, or uh, no, if he loses this match, he can be put back or yeah, he, there's he an get extra, another there's an extra life there so it, if Tom was to win this match and then lost the next one it, it would still be available it's, it's available still, until yeah, it's gone so yeah. you know it's so even if he loses one of the three games he can still actually get back in yeah if Steve was to go on and win this match obviously there's three options he could win the money which is a thousand pounds he can have the bounty move on to his head which means he's got a thousand pounds on his head or which is the or last thing he which wants. Which is the last thing he wants, or Tom could get the extra life. Which again is not a great option for him because it means the the bubble match, which yeah. this is, just pushes back and we're yeah, <laughs> he's not we, in the money we, either in we, that way as well. So we, we could still get that one in there. Yeah, so it, it's <laughs> 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 there's hope yet. <laughs> So even if Steve, the, my thinking is if Steve gets the thousand pounds put on his head, I think he's going to be a big target. He's going to he'd get a match grace, but he'd be a big target. Oh no, uh, it's, it's, everybody's going to be picking. And the, th the thing is, when you look around that room of who's left, that there's. There's a lot of wee friendships and, and practice partners and all, yeah. and you wonder, well, uh, have these got agreements, you know, not to be picking each other? And there's a lot of different uh, ways things could go. Here. But, yeah, and whether those agreements hold up in the uh, in the light of day as well. Well, yeah, because uh, oh, Steve. Apparently, there was there was one agreement went wayward. There was <laughs> one agreement went wayward night. yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> which I absolutely love. <laughs> oh dear. We talked about that in the previous match. Yeah. Scott Pope had a little 
little quiet agreement with Oli that they wouldn't call each other out. That <laughs> did not hold true <laughs> at all. <laughs> opportunity for Steve but didn't give away the frame but he's certainly a big second favourite now for this frame might not be too bad it depends whether he can get to the one on the top of the the brake line, or the, the line in the triangle area. I can't get through to this one. Still got plenty of work here though, the reds are sort of blocking the yellows a little bit, and the eight ball of course. If he leaves them two balls to last, he can he can play the one down the rail, and then take the the one beside it into the opposite corner, and, and you know he's on the black man too, so he'll probably be leaving them two balls to the end. Take the one to the middle now, and then get rid of the two at the top of the table. Maybe just off angle here, he just has to drop this in. Yeah. Tom doesn't mind leaving himself a long pot, he just gets down and strokes these in, look, they're, they're over the pocket. Just wants to get back the cue ball back down the horse somewhere where it's at there and I would be absolutely perfect, but I don't know if we can get there. Just screw you. Always topping it. It's just okay. He has yeah, to nip this. His reaction was that he wasn't happy, but he wanted to be a, a little bit straighter just, but I think he can just nip it in and, and hold top side of the yellow. Craig, why not? <laughs> You're playing in a in a pool tournament. Go and have a little knock on the snooker table to stay loose. There's uh, 16 or 17 pool tables in the back room. And he's gone for the big one. Yeah, he's took these lovely. Yeah, these, uh, these just were not as easy as he's made them look at all. No. It was congested and awkward. Just floated through really nicely. He's up and running in this match. Pool is a massive confidence game. It's it's massively in the head. You know, when you're seeing good things on the table, it just seems to be that the balls just come out for you, and everything just seems easy. Whereas when you're on a bad run, it's, it's the complete opposite. So I do get why it's happening, but you know, when you look at the fields, you just think, well, it can't happen. Yeah. But but it but it does. Tom's done this year has been quite incredible. It's uh, just tournament after tournament, taking down four pro series in well, six months or so. Also the champion of champions, absolutely flying. You, know, you, you find a lot of times when, when you're going through them sort of spells that not only are you obviously playing brilliant, but people are falling over against you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when people do get the chance to beat you, that there's something, they're having a bad stroke of luck getting off, or they're doing something, and it just seems to happen regular when you're on a run like that. Yeah, Tom talked about that during his run. There's been a few matches, certainly early on in tournaments, where players have had their chances to to beat him and not taken it, and then all of a sudden he finds his best game and 
he's, you know, you look at the two finals he had against Stevie Dempsey at the last Pro Series, he's just completely dominated. And Stevie just didn't get a look in. So it sort of plays yeah, into exactly what you're saying. He just needs so much going for you. You need, obviously, to be playing brilliant. And then you need that wee bit of luck at, at the big times, too. But I mean, Tom's just, he's just playing faultless, you know, he's just not making mistakes. And it's so hard to play against because you, you know every time you break you have to clear because you can be sure he will. Yeah, it just puts so much more pressure on every single time you're at the table. You feel yeah. like you've got to play flawless. It doesn't allow you to play flawless. This year, what I've noticed about him, his cue ball has been so much better. I've watched him play in other years, and it, the cue ball would have always been a wee bit loose. You know, he'd have been having to pot hard balls all the time, but he seems to have tightened his cue ball up a lot. Can't blame him for that. I'd no. Really golf no, myself. no. He didn't hit them well at all, Steve. Of course, the one thing you get with, with ball compared to some other sports is that it's not seasonal. It's, it's played all year round. Yeah. But uh, I think there are a few players that would, would be better during the winter. A few players, you know, take a bit more of a, a break from it during the summer. A congested table following that dry break from Steve then. I think he's going to have to screw this one in and come back across the table and try and play the one into the middle and kick onto the red. But he's went, he's went the other way, he's tried to go onto them from that. Hasn't come out well. Nothing attacking on. Look for a good safety. going to fast forward this a little bit. I know there's an awful long way to go in this match, but Tom at two on up now. Let's say he does go on and he wins this match, which means we are into the prize money. Yesterday, once Tom won his first match, very clear plan of what he was going to do. He called out Kevin George and Del Redmond, two of the qualifiers, two of the challengers, and took, took them um, down. Interested to know what he'll do now, that he will be left with pros only. What, what, what happens then if he picks another bounty? The bount if he picks the other bounty, then the winner of that match, the bounty that will go onto their head. So Tom could just, for instance, say Tom picks Jack Whelan. Yeah. Does that mean that Tom has got 1,500 on his head then? If he beats Jack, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Or he has one option. He can put it onto somebody else's head. So he has a choice. It will either go on his head, which means if he wins the tournament, he can then win the money. Or he can say, Declan, I'm giving you Jack's bounty, and Jack right. becomes a hitman. Right. Yeah. There's going to be some it. tactics to play out. Yeah. This yellow must go inside the red. Yeah, there's room. Do you think the eight ball slides in, or does he think that needs a little? It probably does when you look at the main camera. Mm. He, obviously, if he needs to move it, he can. Oh, it comes. Oh, flies in. Yeah. So you, you would you would expect them to get these, no? You feel like one more good positional shot, and he's he's there. Might be a touch straight here, hard to tell. I think you can just force it off the cushion. Probably looking down for the wonder. He's coming, coming across for the one down the cushion. Again, he's played a bit of Just his cue ball has been so good. I not know how much I've watched him, though. He 
he's such a good potter anyway, you, you know, it just he's never ever going to miss an easy pot. And he doesn't miss too many hard ones. Doesn't look like missing, he just floats around the table and never he ever looks like missing. Gives you the sense that the minute he's at the table, that's just another frame on the board. Yeah. It's playing very well with extreme confidence. Yeah, I think you. Uh, I think that's the thing. You've got to take it. Oh, how about that for a break? What a hit that was! That was as flush as you'll ever see a, a, a white ball being hit. And they're not great either. No, you're thinking when he's when they're exploding around the table, you think there's going to be nothing left, and it's going to be easy, but there is work. But just going back to what we were saying, I think if Steve was to turn this match around and gets the win, I think he's going to be quite high on people's list to, to pick out when you look at the list of players left. Yeah. You, you probably will find that somebody slips through to maybe the last three or two players without actually hitting the ball. Yeah, I think so, because we've got a number of players that haven't. When you look at the list of people left, you know, we've got Shane Thompson and Jack Whelan. They've not touched the table yet. Sean Storey, Sean Chipperfield, Carl Sutton, Declan Brennan and Aaron Davies. None yeah, of them have, none of them none of them have played, a, played a match yet. Yeah. So there's going to be, you know, they're all going to be getting deep in this tournament without touching the table. I think there's every, every chance somebody makes the final without touching the table. Yeah. It's nice, you're guaranteed like two and a half grand where it actually put on the ball. It's not bad, is it? That's all right, isn't it? Potentially more as well if you yeah, maybe yeah. if you're playing a hitman in that final. Yeah, yeah. You, that's well, true. I suppose if you lost the final you'd you get the, the runners up, so yeah. yeah. there's a lot to a lot going on for the rest of the day. You'll see it all here on Ultimate Pool TV. We'll be taking a short break later on this oh, afternoon as we see Tom, Tom miss his first pot for a while. This is a ball. We will be back tonight for the rest of the action. Big moment now in this one. And Tom sits down and he knows it. Allowing Steve back into it. Just tipped into the final 10 minutes, 15 seconds a shot. You feel hugely important for Steve that he gets it, and he gets it at this visit. Got to punish the errors when you're playing great players. Just for a second, I thought he had, but he's okay. He's back within one, and he has the break. Back on the break. I think if he didn't have to do that, he would definitely have potted it. Eight balls flying for a second. But other balls are going in, and it's a good chance if that red pulls up. Hasn't really got a red starter, so I think it's, 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 it's he actually might not have a yellow starter unless the yellow he's nearest to does slide past the other one top left. I think it's a plant, no matter what he goes for. It's either a red plant or a yellow plant. It's, both of them are, are very missable. Oh, he's done well. Is he another plant now? I think that's all he's got. I'll take up the garden in here if he gets any more of these. Yeah, I got it. Shake of the head, not landed where he wants to. He's still got options. The red that's just moved below the yellow on the right hand side is now a, a tricky ball. No. Can I stun out? It's 
sort of needs to stun out on the yellow if possible. And land with an angled thing to get on the one at the top. Yeah, he's depending on a wee bit of luck here. It's hard to control this to guarantee an angle. Oh, it's lovely. That's absolutely perfect. He's short. Needs to travel. He's Needs short. To travel. There was nothing for short there. All the hard work. Final positional shot. How often does the transitional shot hurt you? What an effort. <laughs> it was on the hip ball too. Uh, some effort. This isn't natural as well. Look at the side he's having to play that with. And yellow was right in the way. It's a brilliant effort from Steve, but he'll be kicking himself now. But there's no guarantees here for Tom at all, the way these are laid out. Where's right the cue ball? It's in. It's Incredible. In. Incredible. What a let off for Steve Martin. And we are going to go all square here as we're deep into this match. Only six minutes. Massive frame. Tom's made two mistakes in the last two frames. Big error this time. 4 2 3 3. It's huge. I think we'll be happy to see Tom out no matter what. Yeah. And right now, that could be a possibility as his brake lets him down, come up dry. It's just amazing how this match has turned. From Tom Mustad Pot into the corner, it's just all, everything's went against him. That, that's the thing about pool, you know, everything you could be flying, everything's going well. You miss a pot like that, the match turns, and then you don't want another tournament for a year. Yeah. It, it literally is that cutthroat. I'm not saying that will happen because it's unlikely to happen with Tom, but it, it, it can happen. And, and we've seen that happen. You know, we've seen, you look at look at Mick. You know, he was flying last year and, and struggling to to get a win this year. Yeah, and she and you know it does it, it does happen. It's all just on the head, really. With the finish that we got here for Steve, obviously he's got the red nearest the top right-hand corner. If you can't get to that, then he's got to play the other one off it. Would you have wanted to play it a little bit earlier? Yeah, it's, this is really, it's really, really tough to... Well, the, the eight ball goes to both pockets, so... Oh, oh, he needs luck, and he hasn't got it. I couldn't have played that shot. I could not have played. Or maybe, maybe is there a gap there between the two yellows? Surely not. I mean, possibly, but it's incredibly tough to find. He's gone for the plan. Played the plan. Not to be. To me, that's why I was saying, would you have wanted to play that that shot that he played earlier, or try to get to it earlier? Because if he plays that shot with balls down the table, there's more chance to yeah. to then recover. Yeah. There's no guarantees of that coming out well. Four minutes left for Tom here, chance to edge back in front. It would be Steve's break. Try and flick the ball down over the middle here. Played a lovely. that nudge over the middle it never looked in doubt Steve will be kicking himself because I mean, he, he had Tom on the rope sir Tom had missed two, two balls or two chances and uh, you know he had his chance to go 4-3 up there 
and his, his break next, so he could have potentially won the match there. We had Tom getting back to the table. I feel like it's the best way to play Tom Cousins, is to keep him off the table. Came through qualifying. Eight ball was flying there, but yes. not in, and nor is anything else. That could be that for Steve. Not, not an easy opener, though. No. A tough first part. Well, tough, tough for a mere mortar. Huge pressure on this shot for Tom. It really is. If he misses it, he'll feel like he could be in a six-red shootout. If he makes it, he'll feel like he'll win the match. Oh, Calmly. Calmly knocks it in. Never in doubt. Well, that's more or less the game because you can you can run the clock here even if he misses the eight ball or whatever. There's no time left. In this sort of situation, Ronan, is it, it, is it affecting your route? Are you guys now really sort of getting to grips with actually it's pop balls and you slightly, slightly different orders than you maybe would have gone? Yeah, it can be. You're, you're just wanting. Well, what time is you're wanting definitely to make sure and put the next four balls take basically a minute off the clock. Is he on one of these or does he have to take the one down the rail? He doesn't want to be playing the one down the rail. I wish oh, he's on the one to the middle, he's okay. He's on the one down the cushion now if it pulls up. Is he? Is he? Just gone too far. Is there enough time for Steve even if he gets back? 40 seconds he'd have, maybe 45 no. at most if he gets to the table. Keep it chalk though, Steve. Good right out. He needs to be up with us. We had to swerve that. Oh, what a shot. A good shot. What a shot that is. Well, that's the end of he that. could not see the potting angle there. And that is the final blow for Steve Martin. So, who does TC pick now? Oh, yeah, who, who indeed? We're going to find out very soon. Doesn't even have to play the double on the eight ball. I uh, make one off it. <laughs> yeah, don't go in off it. <laughs> eight ball goes in. And Steve shakes hands anyway. No point breaking off. Golden break wouldn't do him any good. And Top Cat gets through another match.